yet. And um, obviously, incidents like this will cause questions too. Yeah, well, let's actually uh, head to Paris now. Peter Allen's joining us there on uh, the live. Peter, what are you hearing there in the city? Well, it uh, feels very like January all over again. There are police everywhere, sirens, uh, what look very like anti police uh, arriving very close to the bar where this uh, shooting is said to have taken place. <coughs> and uh, lots of people who were a few uh, minutes ago enjoying their Friday nights uh, out are now trying to get away from the scene and they're being urged to do so by the police. Uh, indications, Peter, that there may have been... Uh, in fact, we're just seeing pictures of those anti-terrorist police, as you say, now with the um, protective uh, vests on and what appear to be automatic weapons. Uh, some of the reports suggest that the, the guns fired, or a gun fired at this restaurant, was an automatic weapon. That's uh, what I've been hearing. The word Kalashnikov is used all the time uh, over here in relation to incidents like this. That doesn't necessarily mean to say that the Kalashnikov was used, but it normally means to say that an automatic weapon was used. And uh, we're hearing uh, seven wounded, possibly two dead, and uh, within a very, very short time. And that would suggest uh, an automatic weapon may well have been used uh, on this attack inside a restaurant. Uh, we are now hearing from AP News Agency uh, that two explosions were also heard inside Stade de France, the stadium, uh, during this France-Germany football match, which was actually attended by Francois Hollande. Uh, this, yes, is, this is nearby, but in a separate location. Yes, I had colleagues uh, at the game at the Stade de France, and I got a call about that. Uh, it's, it's not in the immediate vicinity, but it's uh, certainly within a few miles. And uh, it was a very loud explosion that uh, a lot of people around the stadium heard. Their first reaction wasn't that it was terrorism. There's all kinds of fireworks being set off at this time of year. But uh, François Hollande was certainly at the game. Uh, France playing the world champion, the prestige friendly. And uh, sadly, it would have been an obvious uh, event to target. I must say as well, earlier today I filed a story about a, a bomb scare at the German team hotel in uh, Paris, which uh, nobody took massively seriously at the time, but the German team was, in fact, briefly evacuated. But who knows, perhaps all these events are linked. Yeah, what, what has been the, the state of alert there in Paris, Peter, bearing in mind what's happened previously in the city with the Charlie Hebdo attacks and so on? It's been at the highest level. I mean, we're seeing anti-terrorist police here in the uh, 11th arrondissement. Um, that's very, very common nowadays. There have been uh, uh, soldiers as uh, well as anti-terrorist police uh, guarding uh, key sensitive buildings, as uh, they refer to over here. And um, as I say, the uh, alert has been very, very high. As, as we all remember back to those terrible uh, days in January during the Charlie Hebdo shootings, uh, very lightly armed police uh, arrived uh, relatively quickly. And, of course, there was a police fatality before the uh, Kouachi brothers managed to uh, get away. Yeah. Uh, this time, there's been a very, very swift reaction. And, as I say, the area is absolutely flooded uh, with police now, and people are being uh, urged to evacuate the area. Uh, Reuters news agency now reporting witnesses saying three dead. Um... That's not yes. an official figure, of course, but clearly the indication uh, is that the, this is a, a major incident. But um, bearing in mind what's happened in Paris previously, um, this will be a worry for the security forces, whether this is terrorist-related now. Of course. I mean, the immediate assumption isn't it in this day and age is that a uh, horrendous shooting like this are terrorist-related. We don't know that at the moment. They are, of course gangland uh, killing still, criminals um, still sort each other out with Kalashnikov in major French cities like Paris and Marseille, so that's a possibility. But bearing in mind that uh, we're possibly linking this uh, with bomb explosions uh, in different points of the city, then uh, certainly if I was the uh, head of the uh, police investigating all this tonight, my first um, reaction would be to suggest it may well be terrorist related. Now, describe for us the, this area of Paris. Would there be any significance apart from obviously it being near uh, or, or located near to Stade de France as to why this area should be the location? Well, actually, the 10th and the 11th arrondissement, where I am now, isn't that close to uh, the Stade de France. Right. But it is close to the old uh, Charlie Hebdo offices. Now, Charlie Hebdo are now in a secret 
uh, headquarters uh, somewhere in Paris. Uh, I wouldn't divulge where that headquarters was, even if I knew for obvious reasons. But um, clearly, um, Paris, uh, central Paris, is a relatively small place, and um, an area like this, certainly on a Friday night, would be full of all kinds of uh, tourists, Parisians, or whatever. Mm. Again, uh, as I said earlier, enjoying their night out. So who knows? Uh, maybe somebody in the restaurant, maybe uh, the fact that tourists use the restaurant, who knows, we're, we're just getting, aren't we? But uh, it would certainly make for a terrorist target which would uh, attract publicity all, all over the world. Uh, and just uh, to, to talk about the other possibilities before, as you say, we, we leap to any conclusions, um, what is... Uh, the state of, of organized crime in Paris. You mentioned, obviously, Marseille and, and uh, clearly drug running and so on. Is there still a, a lot of, of gun crime in Paris as a, uh, a criminal activity? There is. There's a lot more down south, I have to say. Uh, Marseille is seen as the real Kalashnikov center. And uh, as somebody who reports the news here, it's not often that I, thankfully, have to cover gun battles here. They do... Uh, kick off uh, down in Marseille, especially in the huge uh, estates surrounding the, um, the city. But uh, again, thankfully, that doesn't really happen too much over here. Again, that's why uh, it, it, it's, it's worrying that yeah. uh, this may indeed uh, not... I mean, it's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? It might be worrying that it's not crime-related, but it's in fact uh, terrorism-related. But again, very, very early days, so we, uh, we don't know quite yet. Peter, in Paris, thank you very much indeed for updating us there at the scene. Let's speak to Rebecca now in the studio, who's been monitoring the uh, various details coming through. Uh, and it seems that the number of dead or injured is starting to increase. Yes, mixed reports, but we are hearing from the Liberation newspaper in Paris that there are four people dead and obviously a number of people injured. We've got reports of seven seriously injured here, and we understand that there have been two separate attacks. The first attack was on a bar in the French capital. Uh, we understand several casualties there. A gunman used an automatic gun, opened fire, uh, and this bar was in the capital's 11th district. Now, as I say, we understand four people have died at the moment. Uh, we haven't had full confirmation yet, but we understand the figure at the moment is four. Now, this separate attack uh, was an explosion reported to have targeted a bar near the Stade du France, a big football stadium. They were hosting a tournament. So we, we think that, that, that those explosions were actually outside the stadium, right? Because a lot of people inside the stadium reported hearing these bangs going off. Yes, they were somewhere near the stadium. Right. We don't know exactly where, but outside the stadium. Um, and we know that the French president was there. He was evacuated from that site very quickly. It was a match, a friendly match against Germany versus France. Uh, but we have seen on Twitter people taking to social media, commenting about what's happened. Uh, people saying they heard loud explosions, people with grenades, and uh, lots of people talking about the devastation. Clearly, a lot of panic. You can see from the pictures on the screen at the moment that police are at the scene of this incident. There is a cordon in place, and of course this is a city on very high alert yeah. given the Charlie Hebdo uh, attacks in January of this year. Uh, I'm just going to bring you some more breaking news that we're getting through, and that is that Russia uh, Track and Field Federation has been suspended uh, by the governing body, the IAAF. Uh, that's after its uh, deliberations tonight on the uh, doping scandal. Uh, so that's another item of breaking news just coming through. But let's turn now to these pictures we're getting from French television uh, at the scene uh, because, as Rebecca was saying, there is a cordon. You can see those blue lights in the background. But we are now getting this picture of two separate incidents. We don't know the timing, though, whether they actually were simultaneous or, or, or closely linked in time. We don't know the timing or whether they are linked. We don't know yet whether this is some sort of terrorist attack, presumably in the next... Uh, hours that will emerge when the police say more but we do understand there have been fatalities for at the moment we understand that's reported by French newspapers uh, clearly this is a scene of chaos uh, ambulances police at the scene yeah, as the, you can these see. pictures just coming through from earlier these aren't live but significantly we can see coming out of this car now that these appear to be 
um, quite well protected anti-terrorist police with uh, the gun vests and uh, automatic weapons. So um, clearly this is a very significant response that the Parisian police are putting in place here. Absolutely. And as I say, you know, in January I was in Paris when the Charlie Hebdo attacks happened. And this was a city that was, you know, frightened and scared by what had happened. It was incredibly silent, almost eerie back in January. And of course, they are on high alert given what happened. A number of people died then. And that was quite a sort of light police response initially. That, that's one of the issues, of course, that was discussed It was, afterwards. and there was indeed criticism. Yeah. And of course, you can see that they are at the scene very prompt there this evening. We don't yet know, as I say, whether this is related to any sort of terrorist attack. Uh, but clearly, someone has opened fire in this bar in Paris, and then there has been this separate incident by uh, the football stadium, which is just north of Paris. Yeah. Uh, a few more details coming through now as we switch to these live pictures, uh, with Associated Press uh, saying that the bar itself, or restaurant as it's now been called, is actually near the Place de la Republique, uh, with... Um, large number of ambulances now at that scene and indeed at the two separate explosions uh, even though they were heard from within the Stade de France five or six miles from the city centre at this friendly match uh, appear to have been at a bar near the stadium so that's the confusion we are now talking about a restaurant where the shootings took place or a shootout as it's been called near Place de Republique and then the uh, explosions heard outside the Stade de France at a bar near the stadium, but unclear if anyone's been hurt in that particular incident where the explosions were Yes, in that recorded. incident indeed, but in terms of the other incident, just to update you, I'm just seeing on Twitter people at the scene saying that they can see...